All right, welcome everybody. How's it going, Thomas? Oh, it's hot, it's sticky, it it's, must be marathon training season. It is nasty out here. Yeah. So that means we got some good marathon workouts, right? Yep. 100%. So we've got heart of marathon training right now, big endurance um, events coming up ahead of us. So let's talk a little bit about some marathon workouts. Kind of what are our some are three, let's go three. It's an yeah. easy number to remember. Um, three of our favorite marathon specific workouts. Yeah. Um, so one of my go-tos that kind of we use throughout the cycle in a lot of different ways is alternators. Um, so basically it's going to be continuous running where you're going back and forth between two or three different paces. Um, and a lot of times instead of kind of your classic hard interval, shorter, medium length recovery, another hard interval, it's kind of like pretty fast float, pretty fast float. Um, and we use that in a lot of different ways. Everything from like 5K pace up to paces that are, you know, 15, 20 seconds slower than marathon pace. Yep. So it's super versatile. Um, it's a great way to kind of deal with the continuous stress physically and psychologically that you get in the marathon of having to kind of ride the waves and not really getting any reprieve in there, um, as well as working more than just marathon pace running. So. Right. Yeah, I like to use them, like you said, a lot of different facets. Sometimes it's in the marathon a long run, right? right. You're doing a marathon specific one, and mm -hmm. at times you're just kind of straddling that marathon pace. Whatever your goal right. pace is, it lets you kind of straddle that. And if you need to recover a little bit, you can go a little bit slower than the marathon pace. And we're trying to teach the body from a physiological and metabolical standpoint. Right. This is recovery. Yeah. Um, but then you can also use them, like you said, doing some some bottoms up type work and work some 5K pace, and then using more marathon pace or just slower than marathon pace mm -hmm. as recovery again. Right. Teach the body that from a mechanical standpoint, from a metabolical standpoint, this is recovery yeah. and it feels good and it's one of those it's a hard workout <laughs> the first time i did an alternator workout especially on the track was challenging and trying to figure out the rhythm and not going too fast on the fast portion and too slow on the slow portion is really really important and that's a tough thing i feel like athletes have to work through um and it, it doesn't matter if we're going 5k pace to slower the marathon or if we're kind of straddling that marathon pace mm -hmm. sitting in that zone seems to be pretty tough for most people yeah um, it's one of those keys where, you know, we like to get out comfy most of our workouts too. That's a really big one where like if you get out in trouble and you don't really have a break for anywhere from like four miles to yeah. 11, 12, 13 miles, like if you get out in trouble, there's not that recovery period to like, okay, rest, reset, get out a little comfier. Um, so it really teaches that patience, um, but that execution factor is, is huge. Um, but yeah, I, I love them. I know they're a little bit grindy, um, yep. but typically, yeah, we kind of take them from that at the extremes of faster stuff and then like everything we do with training getting more and more marathon specific as we get to those final two and three weeks out of being able to teach that body that okay we're over the edge a little bit let me run two or three miles 15 seconds a mile slower than my marathon pace take some good fuel take some fluids in maybe hit some electrolytes be able to bounce back um but then also be able to do some running where you know if our goal pace is six flat we're going to have some miles that are 550 to 555 in there. So having that skill, having that ability to go just kind of dip over and under, have it average out to our marathon type effort, great way to be able to roll with the punches of a marathon race day. Right. And it's going to be more comparative to what you're going to do on race day. Like right. you said, most people will do their tempos as like, I'm just going to run six minute pace for six miles. Yeah. Or they're going to run like cut down to like drop 10 seconds a mile or something like that. And sure. As great as it would be to run a marathon at the exact same pace every time or yeah. to be able to cut down the entire way, it's not realistic. Yeah. So you're not going to do that at Boston, right? Yeah. There, there, there's, there's changes from a uh, terrain standpoint right. that are going to limit you. So you've got to be able to kind of straddle and be able to, to work that pace from a multitude of different angles. For so sure. it's really, really beneficial. Mm. Definitely something people should try. Absolutely. So let's go from more of the tempo side to a little bit more of the speed fartlek variation. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite. All of my athletes are going to know because I'm explaining this one to them all the time. Nope. Um, but it's stride circuits. So I don't, this is kind of a funny story. We were on a run. <laughs> we were on a run and I was talking to you about like, oh, hey, this new work. I don't know if you mentioned it first or if I did. Mm -hmm. We were talking about one of the workouts we were doing with people right. and we had almost the exact same workout. The, and it was a stride circuit workout. Yep. Like we had gone through this variation. A lot of times we would do like 30 second pickups at the end of a workout just to like feel good, blow the legs out, get some speed and some turnover from a, a mechanical standpoint right. working. Um, and then we had changed to this stride circuit variation where we extended it out a little bit. Yep. So we typically what we do is we do a 60 second pickup, 45 second pickup, 30 second pickup, 15 second pickup. And we drop in some recovery between each of those. Right. 90 seconds is kind of my typical. Yep. That's typically what you're doing yeah. too. Especially earlier if it's more of a moderate session, like which typically that's kind of the best tool for right. where that's enough recovery that like by the next piece in, in the puzzle, like you're ready to hit it pretty solidly. Yeah. It's less about the burn, and it's more about how are you moving the body. Yes, and that's the hardest thing for a lot of athletes to, to get a grasp on is mm -hmm. we're so used to working hard during workouts, right? So they think 60 seconds, I've got to be able to hammer it. Mm -hmm. 
and then I've got to recover, but that recovery might, they might feel like they're, they're walking because they ran too hard in that 60 second pickup where our, our goal and our purpose is just from a neuromuscular standpoint to try to get the body turning over, continue to acquire that skill of running. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice piece that we use, honestly, from more of a recovery standpoint, yeah. just to blow the legs out and get the nervous system back in tune with the skill of running after a really hard effort, say a long run workout before that, or maybe they had a race, we've got a race coming up this weekend that a lot of people are doing. Yep. Um, so it's a nice piece from a recovery tool. And then you also get both ends of the spectrum where we get that neuromuscular stimulus, mm -hmm. but then we also get a good aerobic stimulus because if you're averaging the pace during that stride circuit, yep. your average pace is going to be faster than typical. Just with the with the minute on and there's a short recovery in between, like it's going to average out to be for some of the guys like six minutes or under for that stint of, of a workout. Um, how many reps and how many sets we do is variable to where we're at and who we're working with. Right. Um, sometimes I start, a lot of times I start with just like two, just yeah. kind of get a feel for it. Um, have people work up to like four um, at times where it's it's a, it's a longer amount of duration on, um, on the legs, yeah. um, a decent amount of, of turnover. Um, but then if you slap that in the middle of a medium long run, it gives them the time to be able to go get some aerobic work at the four after and just get some good time on the legs right. building it for a marathon. Yeah, I think we do a lot of stuff that feels like it's a three-on-three -three scrimmage in basketball, this is a little bit more spot shooting. Yeah. An ability to kind of just slow it down, take intentional different shots, and sort of get that touch from different points on the floor. Um, and especially most of the folks we're working with, if we're doing a fall marathon, yeah, maybe we'll come back and do Boston in the spring, but a lot of folks will drop down and run 5K, 8K, 10K, half marathon. Something where we're gonna wanna have done some fast stuff recently right. and be able to tap into that, as well as both, you know, if we run a 30-second piece at, you know, a mile-ish type effort, that's going to make marathon pace feel really, really controlled. Right. So. right. And there's so many people out there that do the marathon because they don't feel like they're fast enough, right? Or they're good enough to run the shorter stuff. Um, or you ask people what their least favorite workouts are, and they're going to say the speed work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's just because you haven't practiced it. Yeah. You haven't worked on it. So this is a way for us to, instead of sitting on the track and getting you to blast some sprints, like, we're going to get some light turnover work. Is it as good as blasting some sprints? Maybe not, but it's a way for them to get some of that coordination in um, from a mechanical standpoint to Absolutely. work on the neuromuscular control to stress the ner central nervous system just a little bit mm -hmm. and people really seem to enjoy them yeah. for the most part it's a nice little fun little workout to kind of spin the legs over worth test driving absolutely for sure for so. sure and our final our final heavy hitter uh is the the mac daddy um one kind of cornerstone of a lot of our marathon preps uh is a peak workout where three to four weeks out um, we'll sort of do a, a session that simulates a lot of the demands of what we want to do and what the body hopefully will be able to do on marathon race day. Um, so we've kind of broken it down and it's, it tends to evolve over the course of an athlete's career. Um, our baseline one, um, let cat out of the bag, is, uh, <laughs> is four by 5K at marathon pace and then a two mile um, sort of max effort on the back end of that. So the goal there, get a lot of running at marathon pace. You're taking fluids in during that. You're wearing the shoes that you're wearing on race day. You're, you're wearing the socks and the kit. So like we're we're testing out the whole system. So we if we need to address or change something, we have three plus weeks to be yeah. able to make a shift. Um, the two things that we, we get out of it tend to be that both it lets us know what the fitness looks like. Um, that two mile tester on the back end, if we can go a decent amount faster than marathon pace after 12 plus miles of hard running, then it's a good sign that, hey, like there's a little more gas and we can be a little right. more aggressive. Um, if we're getting there and we're struggling to hang on, like, hey, like let's back it off. Plus, it's a really great sort of one of those final sessions that really advances the fitness. And as long as we recover well from it, we get stronger. It's something that sort of puts those finishing touches on the fitness. So as much as it's a check, it's also, you know, uh, an advancer of the fitness to a degree as well too. Right, and I think that, that two mile on the end is, is something that's really valuable too to be able to see where you're at, kind of where things are. Like, right. okay, do we have to slow down a little bit at the beginning of the marathon to let us be as successful as possible come race day? Um, maybe let's just say 5.30 pace isn't where you should start mm -hmm. for your marathon. Let's start out a little bit slower because you didn't quite have it at the end of that that two mile. Um, which isn't a bad thing, but it's a good indicator. You'd rather, you would rather learn that three or four weeks out than yeah. come race day and you're 13 miles into a marathon and well, guess what? You went out a little too hard. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really nice nice way to kind of get some of that, that peak work in um, to be able to get some specifics um, for, for races and kind of see where the athlete's at, let the athlete gain some confidence. Um, all the time I'll hear people say like, okay, are we gonna go a little bit longer than this or what's gonna happen? But um, it, it's enough volume to learn a lot, to get a lot of a stimulus, um, but not too much volume where it really sets people behind mm -hmm. with only potentially three weeks from race day. So it's something that people can recover from, but it's a big volume day. If you take a warm up, cool down, 12 miles at marathon pace, two miles on the end, some recovery in between, like people are getting 
20 plus miles um, on this day and that's a place to start and yeah. then obviously we it adapts and changes depending on the athlete's experience in the marathon and kind of where they're at from a, from a personal level too yeah that's the the cool thing is it's a uh, every athlete's an evolving beast and this workout is a beast of a workout so yes. we evolve it alongside them so uh, it's been cool to see some of the the different trajectories and sort of the the different challenges and kind of make it match the demands of the athlete and the race course and sort of you know what do you struggle with on that side of things so it's it's a really great piece of the puzzle and when we surround it with those right sorts of things um, it's done a great job for us of helping to feel pretty confident and have an idea of what's the game plan of what we want to execute when the gun goes off on that Saturday or Sunday yeah so just to kind of recap three of the big workouts that we like to use um, come race day is uh, some alternators some stride circuits and then some sort of peak workout we like to place it three to four weeks out yeah. um, for the alternators are you doing those during the week and in long runs I know I, I use them in a yeah. tons of different ways um, during the weekend and long runs um, and then stride circuits for me are more of a recovery type tool yeah. um, smashed in with a medium long run in yeah. there too and we'll talk sometime about sort of what are like how much how many hard days and stuff like that do we fit into a marathon yeah, cycle yeah, yeah. Um, but for me alternators I'd say are like I kind of introduce them early in the week as sort of that midweek workout and then towards the tail end of the cycle gets a little more marathon specific and those will go in the long run a lot in those last six weeks and yeah. um, try to get one pretty long continuous one in there so you get used to again those physical and mental demands of being on your game for you know eight to ten miles straight get you grinding so, so. yeah so we're pumped man like this makes you want to go crush some workouts so yes. or at least watch some people crush at least some workouts. watch some people so. crush some workouts <laughs> so we're awesome. pumped. we'll see you guys out on the course next time